Hey girl, let me ask you a question. Do you have any unresolved anger in your heart? It's cool, it's cool. I'll keep this conversation between me and you, which is why in today's video, we'll learn how to not make the mistake of avoiding anger, but learning how to manage and control it. Stay tuned. Hello, beloved. I'm Christina Patterson, founder and president of Beloved Women, where we encourage and empower women in the love of Jesus Christ and the truth of God's word. If you're new here, welcome to Beloved. I post new videos every week, so please be sure to join the Beloved family and subscribe so that you don't miss a video. And for those of you returning, welcome back. Today, we are continuing our series called Matters of the Heart as we work our way through the Psalms to help us develop and maintain emotional wellness by learning how to honestly respond to our feelings and how to process our emotions in a healthy way. Today, we're talking about anger. As women, I think we feel the need to be these nurturing caretakers that are always so soft and sweet and never get angry. And as Christians, I think we have this false idea that to feel anger is sinful and not Christ-like. So we don't really like to admit when we're angry because we think that to be angry is to be bad. The issue with that, however, is that we do get angry and we can't properly address this emotion like any other emotion if we don't admit to it in the first place. But first, we must realize feeling angry is not wrong. In fact, we see God himself express anger numerous times in the scriptures. And we even see Jesus become angry when he sees the mismanagement of the temple in Matthew 21. And actually, there are things we should get angry about. Human trafficking, racism, injustice, abuse, and more are all things that should make us angry. When we feel we've been treated unfairly, when we feel like we've been overlooked or taken advantage of, it's completely natural to feel anger. So the question isn't how do we stop being angry or how do we stop feeling anger? Because at some points in our lives, we're going to feel angry and completely avoiding anger for the rest of our lives is not the solution. We need to figure out how we can manage anger so we can become a solution to the problems that have us so upset. So what does the Bible say about anger? In Psalm 4:4, we read, be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts on your beds and be silent. Today's scripture isn't saying don't be angry. God does not expect us to live our entire lives void of this one emotion, but the Bible does say don't sin out of your anger. Anger is such a passionate and strong emotion. For many people, it's probably the most challenging emotion to control. But instead of lashing out or shutting down, today's psalm instructs us to examine our hearts and to be silent. Now this be silent doesn't mean don't express how you feel or that your opinion and feelings don't matter. But it is saying don't be so quick to react. James 1.19 tells us, my brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteous life that God desires. As we've addressed, it's okay to feel angry. However, we need to keep two important things in mind based on scriptures. One, we should be slow to anger, and two, we should not stay angry for extended amounts of time. It's just simply not healthy for us to stay in that state. Anger, like other emotions, is a feeling that lets our hearts know something is wrong. It's letting us know there is something going on in our lives that needs our attention and care. So we need to seek our hearts to see if the feeling is legitimate. In doing so, we give ourselves space to discover if the situation or person making us angry really deserves an angry response. Now we can't do that if we just react every time we feel angry without taking time to ponder in silence and understand why we feel the way we feel as today's scripture instructs us to do. I love watching the cartoon Daniel Tiger with my kids. What I like the most about this show is that the writers do a really good job of teaching kids how to deal with their emotions. There's this one episode that I have my kids watch the most because it talks about how to deal with anger. They sing this little song in it that goes, when you get so mad that you want to roar, take a deep breath and count to four. One, two, three, four. My son is singing it with me right now. After they sing the song, they are calm and better prepared to accurately respond to what's making them angry in a healthy way. When I see my kids getting angry or upset, I remind them to sing this song. 
Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But the point is to at least try to calm down before you respond to any anger that is in your heart. Now, after taking a breather, if we realize that we legitimately have every reason to be angry, then we need to address it and do our best to try to work out what is making us so upset so we are not harboring anger that turns into bitterness, that turns into sin. Ephesians 4, 26 through 27 says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. I know a lot of us, especially if we don't like confrontation, don't want to address the anger in our lives because it may mean having to confront someone else. But here's the deal. If we don't and we allow anger to stay in our hearts, then not only will it completely destroy our joy and peace, but it's an open door for the enemy to take advantage of us and lead us into sin. If we truly want to walk this life out with Christ, then we cannot afford to have any open doors for the enemy to manipulate and take advantage of us. At a Bible study a few months ago, an older woman pulled me and another the young woman aside to give us a simple piece of marriage advice which was this forgive quickly and don't stay angry long she's right and her advice is not just for married women but for all women anger does not have to control you you have a choice in the matter you can make attempts to reconcile any relationships that are causing you anger in your life and if that doesn't work you have the choice to forgive holding on to anger is not going to hurt whoever made you angry and forgiveness is not for them it's for you. Forgiveness closes the door for the enemy to enter your heart and opens the door for God to give you peace and joy. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have time for bitterness and resentment. Life is too short for all of that, but I do have time for God's peace and joy. I want as much of it as I can get, okay? So if that means taking a breather, forgiving, not being so quick to react, then let's do that, beloved. Now it's your turn to chat on this topic, beloved. Today, I want you to comment and let me know what makes you angry, girl? I'm excited to chat more in the comments. If you found today's video helpful, please like it and share it with a friend because you just never know who might need some beloved encouragement today. And for even more encouragement from beloved women, including daily devotionals, practical advice for everyday Christian living, Bible studies, and more, be sure to download the Beloved Women mobile app available in the Apple app and Google Play stores or visit us online at belovedwomen.org. As always, Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, be beautiful, be blessed, and be loved. You are officially invited to the 2017 Beloved Women's Conference this October 14th in Raleigh, North Carolina. This one-day event is filled with inspirational speakers, fun entertainment, breakout sessions, and more to help you refresh your soul, enjoy your life, and empower your purpose. So get your girlfriends and treat yourself by registering for this year's Beloved Women's Conference at BelovedConference.org.